Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to see a demonstration of normal and historical VAR. For this purpose, we are using a demo return data and this is that data set. It has only 29 data points, so not much should be read from the results based on it from an analytical point of view. Our focus is just the computation. In this video, we will do a manual computation and in a later one, we will use the same data to compute the VAR in Excel. So let us begin with the normal VAR first. The mean return from this data set has been pre-calculated and it is 0 0.04. The standard deviation of return is 0 0.32. This is the formal definition of value at risk which I have pre-written for you. It is the quantile of a distribution below which lie Q% percent values of the distribution. Let us see that by drawing a distribution. So this is our mean value mu and on the left side and the right side of it plot the standard deviations. Positive deviations from return don't really bother us. So we are looking at the negative side or the left side of the mean return. Let us say we want to find that with 90% confidence what will be our maximum loss. 90% confidence means that we wish to locate the value of return at the 10th percentile in the distribution. Let us say that this is the 10th percentile. So we want to locate the value of return at this point. How do we do it? In terms of a standard normal variate, let us write it down here. Z is equal to X, which is our desired value, minus the mean return divided by the standard deviation of returns. So in terms of the standard normal variate, our data means that our mean return or mu is 0 0.04, the standard deviation is 0 0.32 and z we can find from the normal distribution table. What we want to do is we want to solve for the value of x. This would be our value at risk. The normal distribution table, or I should be saying the cumulative normal distribution table, gives us the values of z and n of z. In this case, however, we know that n of z is equal to 0 0.10 because we are wanting to locate the value at the 10th percentile. So we know n of z already. If we go to the cumulative normal distribution table, we can locate the value of 0 0.10 in the column for n of z and read the corresponding value of z which is going to be minus 1.28. Once we know that calculation of the value of risk is going to be pretty simple. So we know z is minus 1.28 x is what we are solving for. This is our value at risk. The mean return is 0 0.04 and the standard deviation is 0 0.32. This means minus 1.28 multiplied by 0 0.32 plus 0 0.04 is equal to x which in this case is going to be equal to minus 0 0.36. What does this minus 0 0.36 mean? This means that we are 90% confident that the maximum loss will not be more than 36%. This also means that the 10% VAR is minus 36%. 
This also means that there is a 10% chance or only a 10% chance that the loss may be more than 36%. I have a question for you now. If you had invested $100 in this particular stock or a portfolio, we could say with 90% confidence that your maximum loss would be how much? If you invest $100 in this stock or portfolio for which you see the returns here, with 90% confidence you could say that your maximum loss will not exceed $36. Let us try calculating the 5% VAR now. If 5% is our threshold, so we are trying to locate the value of return at the 5th percentile. This means that N of Z is 0 0.05 and the corresponding value of Z in the cumulative normal distribution table if you check it, it's going to be equal to minus 1.65. This means that minus 1.65 is equal to x minus 0 0.04 divided by the standard deviation of 0 0.32. And when you solve this, you're going to find that x is going to be minus 0 0.488. This means that we can say with 95% confidence now that the maximum loss will not be more than 48.8%. Also, we can say that there is only a 5% chance that the loss will be more than 48.8%. This is all I want to talk about the normal distribution VAR. Let us move over to the historical VAR now. historical VAR. The way we do it is by first of all counting the number of observations in the data set. In this data set, the number of observations are 29. For a 10% VAR, we need to locate the bottom 2.9th return from our data. Let us see. What is the lowest third return? Let us write that down. Because the 2.9th return is going to be between second and the third return from bottom. So lowest third return here minus 0 0.31. Let me highlight it. And the bottom second return is minus 0 0.35. So we are going to have to interpolate. Let us do that here. Let us first of all write the lowest third return, which is minus 0 0.31. And the lowest second return. minus 0 0.35. Let us now interpolate to find the 2.9th return from the bottom. So we are first of all going to calculate the difference between the third and the second return which is minus 0 0.31 minus minus 0 0.35. This gives us 0 0.04. That means that the 2.9th return is going to be equal to minus 0 0.35, that is our second return, plus only 0.9 of the total difference between the second and the third return. Why 0.9? Because we want to go up till only 
2.9 value. So 0.9 of 0 0.04 is going to be added to the second return. This is going to give us minus 0 0.314. Therefore, we can say that our 10% var in this case is minus 31.4%. This differs slightly from our normal var. From the normal var, we got our 10% var of minus 0.36. This indicates to us that probably this return distribution is not strictly normal. Let us also try to find the historical var one more time, but this time with a 95% confidence. We can call it the 5% var. So our n is 29. For the fifth or for the 5% var, we need to locate the bottom which value? Let us see. 5% of 29 and this is going to give us 1.45 return from the bottom. So 1.45 return is going to be between the first return from the bottom and the second return from the bottom. Let us write them down. Lowest second return in our data set is minus 0 0.35 here and the lowest first return is really the least return in the data set which is minus 0 0.41 this one here if we want to get to 1.45 return we have to interpolate so we are going to find the difference between the lowest second return and the lowest first return. This is going to give us 0 0.06 which means that the lowest 1.45th return is going to be we are beginning from the um, let me see where do we begin from. We are beginning from the first return minus 0 0.41 and we are adding on to it 0.45 of the total difference between the first and the second return which is 0 0.06. This is going to give us minus 38.3%. So this is our 5% historical var in this case. Compare that with the normal var. The normal var was minus 48.8% and the difference is because this data set may not be normal enough and that is possibly true because this has just 29 observations. In the next video, we are going to use the same data set to compute the normal and the historical var in Excel. See you later.